Good evening. Have I mentioned lately how much I love you? Wow, you're all so brave coming out here in the freezing... Debbie, I didn't even see you come in. In the freezing cold and uh, darkness that surrounds us. Thank you uh, so much for being here. Uh, it means something to me, and I hope it will mean something to you as well. Um, we are, this is going to be a short service, I hope, um, 30, 40 minutes at the most. And so if you would stand for the ringing of the church bell. And now if you could join me in the call to worship. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless God's holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all God's benefits. Who forgives all your sins and heals all your infirmities? Let's pray. Lord God, we are here to worship you. Thank you for this opportunity to remember, to lift your name in praise and thanksgiving. Thank you, Lord, for the fellowship among all of us. Thank you, Lord, for remembering who we are and who made us. It was you, Lord. We know it was you. Bless our worship and let our worship be a blessing to you. And it's in the precious name of Jesus that we pray. Amen. Our opening hymn today is number 362. Now, I haven't actually um, sung this before, I don't think. Uh, it's um, Lord Jesus, Think on Me, and it was recommended as an Ash Wednesday hymn. So let's see how it goes. Lord Jesus, think on me and purge away my sin. From mirth born passion, set me free and make me pure within. Lord Jesus, think on me with care and woe oppressed. Let me your loving servant be and best your promised rest. Lord Jesus, think on me amid the battle strife. In all my pain and misery, oh, be thy health and life. Lord Jesus, think on me, nor let me go astray. Through darkness and perplexity, point to the heavenly way. Lord Jesus, think on me, that when this life is past, I may eternal brightness see and share your joy at last. You may be seated. And Rhonda, you have the Old Testament lesson for us? The Old Testament reading today is from Joel chapter 2. That's in the Old Testament. <laughs> Verses 1 and 2 and then 12 through 17. 
Blow the trumpet in Zion, sound the alarm on my holy hill. Let all who live in the land tremble, for the day of the Lord is coming. It is close at hand, a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and blackness. Like dawn spreading across the mountains, a large and mighty army comes, such as never was in ancient times, nor ever will be in ages to come. And then 12 through 17, even now, declares the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting and weeping and mourning. Rend your heart and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and abounding in love, and he relents from sending calamity. Who knows, he may turn and relent and leave a, behind a blessing, grain offerings and drink offerings for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, declare a holy fast, call a sacred assembly, gather the people, consecrate the assembly, bring together the elders, gather the children, let those nursing at the breast, let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her chamber. Let the priests who minister before the Lord weep between the portico and the altar. Let them say, spare your people, Lord, do not make your inheritance an object of scorn, a byword among the nations. Why should they say among the peoples, where is their God? <coughs> Thank you. I'm going to do a pastoral prayer this evening. Um, when I call it a pastoral prayer, I... I give you an opportunity to lift up names uh, that, of people that are on your heart today. And um, uh, each time when we do that, we'll say, Lord, hear our prayers. So let's pray. Lord, we love you and we thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for warmth in this sanctuary. Thank you for love in our lives. Thank you for all the things you made us to be and all the things you've given us to sustain us. We are truly grateful. Lord, you know we come here with burdens on our hearts, uh, people that are um, of concern to us, Lord, uh, going through trials of one type or another. Uh, we also are concerned about situations uh, in our lives and around the world. And so now, Lord, we lift those things up to you. I'll lift up Steve's name, Steve Booty. Uh, he's, uh, um, yeah, he needs our prayers right now. Lord, hear our prayer. 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 And Lord, I'm thinking about world situations, um, wars, death. Lord, I just like to see all that go away and only you can make it happen and so Lord hear our prayer and now let's pray the prayer that God taught us to pray our Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now, if you would join me in the reading of Psalm 51. This is verses 1 through 7, and it's from a translation called The Message. Generous in love, God give grace. Huge in mercy, 
Wipe out my bad record. Scrub away my guilt. Soak out my sins in your laundry. I know how bad I've been. My sins are staring me down. You're the one I've violated. And you've seen it all. Seen the full extent of my evil. You have all the facts before you. Whatever you decide about me is fair. I've been out of step with you for a long time, in the wrong sense before I was born. What you're after is truth from the inside out. Enter me then, conceive a new true life. Soak me in your laundry and I'll come out clean. Scrub me and I'll have a snow white life. Tune me in to foot tapping songs. Set these once broken bones to dancing. Don't look too close for blemishes. Give me a clean bill of health. God, make a fresh start in me. Shape a Genesis week from the chaos of my life. Our gospel lesson today is from the Gospel of John. We're in chapter 15, verses 5 through 17. A lot of these words you will recognize as having heard before. I am the vine. You are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples." As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends, if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants, because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends. For everything that I learned from my Father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, and so that whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. This is my command. Love each other. This is the reading of the word of our Lord. So how many of you believe that you are a total cosmic accident? Any, any, anybody believe that? Well, how many of you believe you were created by a higher intelligence? You can substitute lots of words in there uh, for higher intelligence because I'm pretty sure God's more intelligent than me or you. So... Most of us believe the latter, don't we? So listen, if you were intentionally created, then why? Why? Why did God bother to make you? I've had a few times in my life when I thought, God, you made a terrible mistake making me because I haven't been able to do anything worthwhile. In our passage, we learned why. Why were we created? It's one of these things that very specifically 
stated. It's one of the huge questions in our life. Why am I here? Why did God bother? Why do I exist? This passage answers it in very specific words. So that you might go and bear fruit. That's why you exist. So that you might go and bear fruit. Now, this passage not only tells us why we are here, why God bothered to make us, but it also tells us how to bear fruit. And it also tells us what fruit is. So, we're supposed to go bear fruit, and um, it tells us how to do that. Now, who would have ever thought or interpreted this passage as being a passage on prayer. Would you consider this to be a passage on prayer? It probably wouldn't be your first thought when you read it, that this would be a passage on prayer. But you know, it's kind of interesting. Um, in verse 7, uh, this passage says, ask. Ask. And, and in verse 16, it says it again. Ask. Now, when you ask God for something, what are you doing? Praying. <laughs> You're praying, aren't you? Yeah, absolutely. You are praying. You are encouraged to ask, and that is prayer. James 4, 2, you do not have because you do not ask. Yeah, pretty simple. So now I'm going to make the case that John 15, 5 through 17 is a passage on prayer. Most people wouldn't believe that. Passage on prayer. So here's the thing. We're told why we're here, and that is why? To bear fruit. That's why we're here. And we're told how do we bear fruit? One way is to pray. One way to bear fruit is to pray. Pretty clear in this passage. Ask. And when you're praying, you are bearing fruit. Verse 16 says, I chose you. You didn't choose me. Why were you chosen? Why? To bear fruit. Yeah. That's what God chose you. He chose you for that task, specifically chose you for that task, to bear fruit. And how do we bear fruit? Well, at least one way is to pray. In fact, some people, that is their primary way. People that know and have learned that they have the gift of intercession, one of the primary ways that they bear fruit is by praying. That's how they do it. They intercede on other people's behalf. I'm going to tell you two quick stories. The first one is about a man named Terry Teekle. Terry Teekle um, is a man who's written several books on prayer. Do you know Terry? No. I, I'm not surprised. Uh, Terry Teekle's written several books on prayer. Uh, he's held seminars all over the country. I've been to several of his seminars um, on prayer, and uh, they're always powerful. Uh, some of the books he's written is A Flea on an Elephant's Rump, um, and, uh, and uh, another one is called Making Room to Pray. That's about having a specific place within the church uh, for people uh, to carry on their prayer ministries, and several other books he's written over the years. Uh, he was on a plane one time, um, probably headed to one of the seminars that he uh, does over the country, and he was talking to a rather successful man uh, who was seated next to him on the plane. He was a very well-dressed, intelligent person. And that person was sitting there working on his laptop, uh, and eventually they got into a little conversation. Terry asked him, are you married? And the young man said, yes, he'd been married three years, but his wife had cancer and she was dying. And Terry's first instinct, 
the first thing he thought of, the first thing he did was reach for the man's hand and say, can I pray with you? Would that be your first instinct? You know, I remember being in situations where I was convicted I was supposed to pray. This was before I was a pastor. This is when I was a pew sitter. <laughs> um, I, 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 and I thought, I, don't, I can't do this, Lord. What do you mean, you know? Uh, I, to, to actually pray out loud with somebody uh, in a setting that wasn't church even. It would be hard in church, but it would really be hard in another kind of a setting. Um, I, my knees knocked, you know, I sweated. I didn't sleep the night before because I knew the next day in a business meeting that I had that God had called me to pray. I did it, and it was okay. <laughs> it was fun. Uh, nobody died, you know. I, I didn't lose the deal. Uh, it, it was all just fine, but boy, it was hard for me to do, and I'm guessing it's hard for you as well. God calls us to pray. It's one of the ways that we bear fruit. So, um, the other story that I have to tell you is about a woman that walked into the pastor's study one day. Uh, uh, she sat down, removed a handgun from her purse, um, and sat it on the table next to her. Uh, she was clearly at the end of her rope, and she came to the church and ultimately to the pastor looking for one specific thing. It wasn't to bake pies for a potluck. It wasn't to join a women's group. It wasn't to hear a three-point sermon. It was to find hope. She came to find hope. You know, on any given Sunday morning, in this very sanctuary, there are people who are being run over by life. You know that? They're being run over by life. Now, they try to hide behind a smile, you know, to kind of mask the pain that they're feeling in their hearts. And it could be Anything, marital problems, abusive relationships, their children who have turned away from them and, and no longer speak to them. It might be financial failures. It might be a terminal illness in them or in their families. It might be addiction. There are so many burdens that people carry. And every single one of us, even this evening, are carrying some kind of burden for ourselves or for others. We, in this sanctuary, we're just a cross-section of society. You know that? People all around us, in every situation, they're all suffering just like we our society is plagued with violence and crime and immorality and homelessness and hopelessness. Too often people come here and all they get is a bulletin and a three-point sermon. Do you think that's fair? I don't know. I hope they get more. I hope they get more. One of the ways we bear fruit is to do what? Right. We've declared 2024 as a year of prayer in this congregation. Matthew 21, 13, Jesus said, My house, my house, will be called a house of prayer. 
Now, everyone needs to hear this message, but not everyone will receive it, unfortunately. However, I can say one thing for sure. You're the most faithful because you came out here on a snowy, blowy, <laughs> mid-February night in the dark. And you're listening to what I have to say. Let's pray during Lent. Let's really pray. Now, I'm going to make some hard suggestions. It's the kind of suggestion that I heard in my head from God that said, tomorrow in that business meeting, you need to say a prayer, Chris. What? It's not the proper setting, you know? What if they throw me out on my ear? They didn't. I'd like to suggest that you pray. Pray every day, but not just pray. I'd like you to get the image of a person in your mind right now. Somebody that's on your heart. And I would like you to pray with them at least once during Lent. I would like you to pray out loud. Yeah? The two of you bow your heads where you go to that person and you say, can I pray for you? I have had people turn me down. Have you had anybody turn you down? No, I have. Yeah. When I was a chaplain in the hospital, I always offered to pray with the patients and I had a couple that threw me out of the room. Get out of here, I don't want that stuff. But I always felt I got the last laugh because as soon as I walked out of the room, I stood next to the door and you know what I did? I prayed for him. Ha! Just try to stop me. I'd like you to pray for somebody. Pray with somebody. Sometime over Lent. You know somebody that needs prayer, don't you? I know you do. But first of all, we all need it. And second of all, somebody especially needs it from you, from you. So, get that specific person in your head and pray for them and with them. Make that vow to pray with somebody. And when you do, I want you to know you have just become Christ to them. You know that? When you hold somebody's hand, and by the way, I've held people's hands in all kinds of weird situations and prayed for them. It got easier over the years. I remember standing at the window at the post office. I was there to mail a package, and the gal behind the window was crying. I had no idea why she was crying. It didn't have anything to do with me or my package, I can assure you. She was crying. I said, can I pray for you? Oh, yeah, of course. And I held out my hand to her. And she said, now? That's the best time. Yeah, there were people lined up behind me. <laughs> there were. And I held her hand and I prayed for her. We need to be willing to pray for others because when we do, we are Christ to them. We need to be their comforter. We need to be their encourager. And we need to bear fruit the way Christ designed us to bear fruit. And what is fruit? Well, he told us why we're here. It's to bear fruit. He told us how to bear fruit. It's to pray. And here's what fruit is. It's love. Yeah. It's love. That's what fruit is. When you take someone's hand, or don't, when you pray with them and for them, what are you doing? You're loving them. Absolutely. And they won't miss that, by the way. They'll know they're being loved.
I encourage you to read John 15, and I hope that you're reading, um, it started today, our uh, readings in the Gospel of John. Um, I hope you're reading them. I'll be preaching out of the Gospel of John the entire uh, time during Lent until Easter, and um, I hope that you, um, it, it, by the way, they they aren't synchronized, okay? <laughs> I, I won't be preaching necessarily on something that you just read, but if you read it all, you will have read something that I'll be preaching on. So, God bless. I wanted to just tell you briefly, and I'll probably repeat some of this on Sunday, but um, did you see our a fancy candle stand there? Um, that is called a Pascal candle, um, and most churches, uh, liturgical churches, have a, a tradition in their past somewhere of a Pascal candle. Um, it's basically there to symbolize uh, Christ being in our midst, okay, that, that Christ is here with us in this sanctuary, uh, and we, we symbolize that with the light of the candle. Um, this candle stand has had multiple lives over the years. Um, there is a picture hanging in this room uh, in the entryway uh, that you're welcome to stop and look at. The picture was taken in this sanctuary in 1911. And when it was taken, that stand and, and its mate, there are two of them, sat on either side of the pulpit and provided the light necessary for us blind pastors to be able to, um, to read our sermon notes. Um, when that stand was in the sanctuary in 1911, it was uh, an oil lamp. In fact, all of the lights hanging in the sanctuary were also oil lamps because in 1911 there was no electricity here. Um, it was later converted to an electric lamp, and then that was uh, uh, um, taken, uh, the cords were cut off at some point, and uh, when I saw it, I thought, oh, it looks like a Pascal candle to me. So we will have our Pascal candle uh, throughout uh, Lent, uh, and we may use it some other times. Uh, the tradition often uses it for baptisms, and sometimes for communion. Uh, and uh, that has been around for over 100 years in this sanctuary. So it has a lot of meaning to most of us. Thanksgiving over the ashes. Let's pray. Almighty God, in the beginning you created humankind from the dust of the earth. Bless these ashes now and make them become for us a sign of our mortality and our penitence. Help us to remember that it is only by your love and grace, through the unspeakably precious gift of your Son, that we are given everlasting life. In his name we pray. Amen. Um, just like we do for communion, you're invited to come forward and to receive the ashes. Come. dust you were made, and to dust you'll return. From dust you were made, and to dust you'll return. From dust you were made, and to dust you'll return. From dust you were made, and to dust you'll return. From dust you were made, and to dust you'll return. From dust you were made, and to dust you'll return.
from dust you were made and to dust you'll return. From dust you were made and to dust you'll return. From dust you were made and to dust you'll return. From dust you were made and to dust you'll return. From dust you were made and to dust you'll return. From dust you were made and to dust you'll return. you were made and to dust you'll return. Would you please stand and join me in our closing hymn number 214 Lord who throughout these 40 days. Lord, who throughout these 40 for us adore and pray, teach us to overcome our sins and close by you to stay. As you with Satan did contend, and did the victor win, O oh, give us strength in you to fight, in you to conquer sin. As you did hunger and thin to teach us gracious Lord to die to self in soul to live in your to holy word and through these days of penitence and through your passion tide forevermore in life and death O Lord with us abide abide with us and through this life our doubts and pain relieve an Easter of unending joy we shall at last receive. Let's pray. Lord God, I ask a special blessing on each and every person here today. I pray that they would bear fruit. I pray that somewhere in this land, they would find an opportunity to pray with someone. Someone who really needs it, Lord. Someone that they can show your love to. I pray this blessing in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen and amen. God bless.